here we are. It's Cedia. Yes. Everything's being prepared. Uh, we've there. just arrived. Everything's being assembled and Cedia kicks off well, in two days, yep. Uh, we are just outside of the Barco residential stand. Very and exciting. There's the new Nurthus. It's amazing. Anyway, the th reason we're here right now is the Barco Northern Lights LED wall panel is being constructed. This Absolutely. This is the Bifrost. This is the Bifrost. Cinemascope. Yes. Cinemascope. Yep. Yes. And we're going to meet Peter Shilkin from Barco Residential. Yep. Wealth so, of uh, knowledge. He's going to embark on us with this beautiful wall we're about to see. And just for everybody who doesn't, un, you know, may not know what Barco is, mm. um, they are the high standard it's cinema projection, really. I mean, if you go to the movie theater, certainly in the US, I think the numbers are, are high. 60% of all cinemas are Barco, Barco projectors. So these guys know what they're doing. Yep. Are you ready? We're ready. Let's go meet Peter. Let's go. All right, cheers. Peter, how are you? Hey mate, how you going Andrew? Good to meet you. Hey Aaron, nice to meet you. Where are we? Well, we're at the Barco residential stand yep. uh, at Cedia 2023 here in Denver. And a little bit different, normally we have projectors and home cinema and so forth like that yep. um, um, put up. But this year we're actually doing our LED wall. Um, which is... Uh, so this is obviously still under construction, right? This, this one right here, we're, we're putting together right now, so you can uh, actually see some of the back background information uh, or what's actually happening. So correct me if I'm wrong, but this is a lot of the magic of the Barco LED wall, right? Because this is what makes the wall unique. Not only the interactive or, or the interconnecting cabling, yeah. but also the way the modules... So, so this is what we call our Northern Light series. Yep. Um, and uh, this particular model is called Bifrost. Uh, this is our top of the line model. This is a cinemascope yep. um, structure here, um, which is generally, well, it's generally not done. This is something that's obviously with our projectors very specialised. Yep. The thing with LED walls is a lot of the uh, performance criteria is based on structural build and processing. Right. The actual LED panels, um, there's not too many manufacturers of them. And, you, uh, and they have impact, but they're not necessarily the main core of it. The processing is, and then the structural build. Now, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, but Barco started on this 20 years ago, and they have they developed their own process, which is also part of that magic. Okay, so with Barco, basically invented the LED concept, LED wall technology. Um, the only one on the market currently that uses uh, our own fully engineered processor, um, all done in, um, in Belgium. So we have total control over what we can do uh, we have a lot of processing power, so we're not a uh, third party and an OEM uh, um, a processor, which means we can do a lot more on that side. Plus, we've been doing it probably at least 10 years longer than most are more experience and knowledge there. So what's the advantage of having these special interconnecting panels? Is that something to do with the seams? Well, so basically um, the structure that you've got here and the biggest issue, and, and it, you get away with it a lot of commercial panels because they're showing um, preset, high controlled um, information or they're, they're in an area where it doesn't really matter if the tiles aren't perfectly seamless. So most LED walls, you generally find you can see the seams at some point, generally in, especially white seams, um, you can see it a lot more or lighter coloured seams. So in here, the structure that we use is we've got a unique mounting mechanism, which I can't show at the moment because they're just in the process of it. But when you mount the actual panel, and as you can you see, can there is some. See one offset. Yeah, you can see yeah, one offset yeah, up yeah, here. Yeah. So basically, it hooks onto the back here, yeah, yeah. and when you've got it here, you can't misalign it. If you if it's out of alignment, and when you give it a little bit of a push, because then it comes back in and it locks in place. If it's out of alignment, then basically what will happen is it won't push backwards. And the reason why we have that is a lot of damage is caused in the installation. And the oh, damage it caused to the sides of the panels. Yeah. Is they're very, very um, uh, suspect to damage and they're exposed. And that damage may not be seen straight away, it comes over time. So this locking mechanism does comes in, but at the same time, when you'll be able to come back after it's built, you'll be able to put like a little magnet in front of here and then the panel pops out by itself. So serviceability. So do you think there's a fair argument to say that the Barco is the market leader in these panels? Oh look, I, I, I think so. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, we've got to have a look around what's here at the yeah. show, but I, we'll I, check it out. I would say from what I've seen when this first was launched at ISE yeah. as well earlier, uh, I mean, little things like we have four-way connectivity. So if one um, uh, way of communication uh, fails, 
then uh, it all automatically clicks in on the other one. So you, you've basically got this seamlessness, you've got this reliability. You've got to remember the core of this is, is a lot of key critical, mission critical, yep. um, traffic conditioning, you know, um, uh, all those sort military of areas, military, all those sort of applications where they need to have reliability. So you, you avoid that situation and you that, don't have really large, there's no large looms running anywhere through this. No, no, so. it's all basically handled by this little cable here yep. uh, that does all the connection. And it's next to nothing, right? It's next to nothing, so you don't have a big loom sitting behind it. Yep. The actual, even though in this installation you don't see it so much, but the actual backing as well. Um, and we actually have a 5G uh, system here, so you can actually run more tiles off uh, each uh, processing point, which means there's uh, a lot better reaction time, there's a lot better control over the system, and it's not as heavy reliant on that. It's, it's got some really good benefits, and the biggest one really comes down to the fact is the processing, once you get a picture up there, it is cinematic. That's and it's cool. the first time I've seen an LED wall that's cinematic. You think, Aaron? Amazing. I mean, uh, it's outstanding just to see the engineering of this. Um, you know, we're, we're used to seeing screens on a wall. Yep. Yeah. This is this is something this is entirely yeah, different. Level, isn't it? I, I think the thing in engineering mostly is it's about reliability. It's not just about performance. It's that if a tile goes down, we take a tile off. And here's the catch with our processing: if you've got something that's been used for like ten thousand hours, right, you're going to have okay. degradation in the panels. Yeah. And then you put a brand new panel back on. You you're going to notice the difference. Not with this. Yeah. Our system enables us to realign it. Yeah. Um, so it looks exactly like it should do in the whole um, scheme of the panels. And we can actually lower this down to 10% brightness. Okay. Because the thing about LED walls is using them in home, they're way too bright. And most panels, you go below 70% brightness, you start getting um, aberrations and issues on the screen. So you start getting, black oh yeah, you start getting these blocking and, and greys. Um, ours is consistently performing down to 10% brightness. And in a residential situation, um, really you need that. You might need to do lighting and you don't want this burning your eyes out. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Fatigue is a huge issue. Yeah. Uh, and then you go into our interlacing way, we put it together. Remember, these are for traffic control situations primarily where people are looking at screens all day. Yeah. So fatigue, reliability, ease of um, repair, uh, longevity, um, all those sort of things are more important. Very and cool. then we just take them and modify it for residential and add some extra things in. So here's better. where I see this being uh, fantastic in the home space is not just dedicated cinema rooms, but your multi-purpose media room where they want the biggest screen yep. and something bright enough to combat. Sometimes you've got yeah. you know big bay windows in a room and even simulated windows. And the one thing you know that we're looking at heavily if, if you're into uh, high-end electronic art yep. as well. Digital art as Digital well. Art. Right. So um, well, know, I mean the thing about cinema rooms. Um, we, we still feel, and this is a personal thing, that a projector like our Freya or Nerthus or Njord oh, totally is, oh, is yeah. more cinematic. Yeah. Yeah. If you were to use a screen in a projector, uh, an LED wall in a projector room, uh, sorry, in a cine home cinema, this is basically the only one that I could even, standing aside and mark a residential, recommend because you can drop the brightness right. so it's not burning it. Remember, though, that these are different to how projectors work because projectors are reflected light, yeah. so that's how we see. It's yeah, more natural, more cinematic. Yeah. But as far as LED walls goes, I mean, when you see this guy up and running, you'll be like, wow, we'll that is so close. That. Yeah, it is so close. Yeah. It's ridiculous. But yeah, you're right. Media rooms, um, gaming, digital art, uh, where there's ambient light, um, definitely. That's a huge market for this. Um, sure, put it in a home cinema, no, no problems at all. But we tend to say, look, Here's no, a choice between one or two. We're with that. We prefer to use the screen. We can get the speakers in the right place and everything else. Correct. That's but, the other but thing. But in terms yeah. of living spaces, media oh, rooms, absolutely. Uh, art, as we talked about. So if you're into any of that stuff and you're looking for the best possible results, give us a call to HT. Obviously, now with Aaron on board. And we've got the support of uh, people like Peter and Barco. So uh, yeah, we can certainly help you out. Great. Thanks very much. All right. Thanks. Appreciate it. Catch All right. you. Good to meet you. See you.